Hey everyone, welcome to the third video in the CMake tutorial series. Um, we've already covered how to set up a basic project with CMake. We've covered uh, including a third party library, which we use to compile some code. And, uh, you know, we didn't do much with it, but uh, it just shows you how to include some library, its header file, its uh, library file, and, and get all that set up. Uh, so if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend you go back and, and take a look. This third video is going to look at configuring our project a little bit more. And this is kind of a uh, not very focused, but more just kind of tips, CMake tips for setting up your uh, C++ project and getting things up and running some more. So without further ado, let's look at some code. So the first thing we're going to look at is our CMake list file. Um, if you've seen the previous videos, you'll recognize some of this. This is essentially the CMake version, the project. I've included the project version. So that's our project's version, and this is 1.0. Uh, I mean, you can set whatever you want there as your project version. We're adding our source file, and we're creating a executable. And then there's some new stuff down here. So the first thing we're going to do is just make sure that this compiles. Uh, and, and, you know, we can set up our CMake project and all that, and then compile it. And then we're going to dive into some of the new stuff here. So let's make a build directory go into that build directory uh, and then issue the CMake command to generate our build files into the current directory by telling CMake where our project uh, folder is or project, sorry, project file is, which is the CMake list.txt file. So we're going to go CMake dot dot. Uh, CMake will go into the parent directory, which is what dot dot means. It's going to pick up the CMake list file by default and then generate our make file and all that stuff in the current directory, which is our build directory. And as you can see, it's all good. We've got a C compiler, C++ compiler, a bunch of other info and stuff uh, that we're not going to get into here. And let's just build it. CMake dash dash build and compile. So we see that there's an error. Um, that error is there's two parts to this. Uh, the first part is the fact that it is using my Apple client compiler, which doesn't include some of the latest features uh, as Clang or the LLVM project should. Um, now, you might be using GCC or on Linux or uh, Visual Studio Code on Windows or sorry, Visual Studio on Windows or whatever. But um, basically, all this means is that because we're using make unique in, in this project or in the source file, the compiler is getting confused, doesn't know what that is, and it's throwing an error because make unique doesn't exist. Now, if we go to the code, if you're familiar with make unique, you'll know that it is included in the memory header, which is where smart pointers come from in the C++ library. Um, don't worry too much about what make unique does or what smart pointers are. I'll, I'll do videos on a bunch of this stuff in the future. Um, it's a C++ 11 feature for memory management. Uh, so essentially, in, you know, in C++ when you, when you uh, allocate memory, you have to remember to delete it. So what C++ 11 included is smart pointers, which are essentially um, just a way of uh, using what's called reference counting so that when you create an object and that object goes out of scope, uh, you don't have to remember to delete it. C++ will use the reference count and, uh, and delete it for you. Don't worry, like I said, too much about that. We'll do a separate video on that. But for now, you just need to know that uh, it doesn't know what make unique is. And uh, like I said, there's two parts to that. The first part is the Apple compiler. So we want to use uh, LLVM 9, which is the latest, uh, which includes the latest Clang compiler, uh, which has the make unique um, function in there for creating a unique pointer. So the other part to that is the make unique is only available from C++ 14 and up. And uh, because the, the Apple provided compiler, the current one, uh, doesn't really support that uh, as far as I understand uh, since we're getting this error we're gonna do two things we're gonna tell CMake where the compiler we actually want to use is and I've installed it on my system and I'll show you how to do that and then we're gonna change the standard so that uh, when CMake configures the project and it issues those compile commands it will include some directives so that uh, the compiler itself will compile will compile our source code 
with C++ 17 in our case in mind, and it'll enable those features. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, reissue the CMake command, but pass a parameter to it, which will tell CMake uh, where the C++ compiler is. So the way you do that is you do dash D, and dash D and anything that follows it will be a C CMake parameter, or including an argument. So we're going to go uh, dash D CMake. So the compile uh, the command's already there for us because I've already ran this command in the past. Uh, and what that's doing is it's saying uh, it's running CMake, and it's saying there is a parameter that we're going to provide, which is CMake. I don't know why this is scrolling. Uh, CMake CXX compiler CXX is uh, essentially just the, the C++ compiler and it calls it CXX because it doesn't include pluses in uh, these environment variables. Um, and uh, we do equals and then we pass the path to the compiler. So because I've installed uh, LLVM with my homebrew on Mac, uh, this is where the Clang++ compiler is. And CMake is now going to use this as the C++ compiler uh, for any CPP files that are part of our project. So when we rerun that, you'll see now that uh, we haven't configured the C compiler, so it's still using Apple Clang, but we're uh, configuring the Clang, or sorry, the C++ compiler, and we're telling it to use Clang 9, which is installed there. So that uh, compiled successfully, or sorry, that, that generated our build files successfully. And we're gonna go back to our code our project file, and I'll show you, uh, this is what configures the C++ standard. So here we're saying uh, we want CMake to use uh, the C++ uh, 17 standard across all of our CPP files, and we wanna make sure that that's required for everything. So this is just a variable that, that sets the version number itself, and this is what actually turns it on and uh, ensures that CMake uh, passes those arguments that are compiler so that 17 is enabled for every uh, what's called compilation unit that's that's compiled. A compilation unit is just any source file you have uh, as part of your project, such as main.cpp in our case here. So with that in mind, uh, we have uh, set Clang as our compiler, uh, the latest Clang. We're enabling C++17 and we're turning on that standard. Now if we go back, and we rebuild, that error goes away. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these two lines right here. There's this config.h.in file, which is essentially a template file that uh, is going to tell CMake what a output file should look like. So what I mean by that is that this is essentially just, like I said, a template, and then CMake is going to process that file and it's going to inject some of its variables and produce a header file that we can include in our project. So let's let's take a look at this config.h.in file and you'll have a better understanding of what's going on. So here's the, um, the template file itself. So uh, we have a preprocessor directive to define a um, essentially this identifier right here, which is the CMake intro version major. So it's the major version number and the minor version number. And then we're in, we're essentially CMake is going to see these at CMake intro version major and minor uh, symbols right here, and it's going to inject something from our CMake list file into this file. So. I'm going to show you real quick what that means. Uh, this is the major version, so the one right here, and this is the minor version. So 1.0 is our, our project version. And then what that's going to generate once CMake, uh, once you run CMake dot dot like we did before, what that's going to do, it's it's going to uh, produce a the conf config dot h file that you see right here, and it's going to populate those two uh, preprocessor lines with the respective values from our build version. So if we open that, so what we see that CMake has done is it's produced these two identifiers and put in the major and minor versions 
uh, into the files. Now, in order to uh, include that, we have to do our include directory, which is our build directory. So if, as you remember, we created this build directory here and all of the build files for this uh, CMake project are generated in here. So when I ls in here, you'll see that. And the file that we generated is this config.h file. Now, this is called in CMake, this is called the binary directory. And it's called the binary directory because this is where our actual binary is stored along with all the object code and everything else, all the other compiled code that uh, our, our project is actually generating in order to get to this final executable. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we include this config.h uh, from the build directory into our code so that we can print out our version number in the console? And I'll show you how that looks. If we go back to CMake list, now you'll see that we have added this target include directories function call here. Essentially, what we're doing is we're just saying uh, this target is including these include directories. In this case, it's only one. And we are saying uh, basic, which is our executable. Uh, it's a publicly accessible include. So meaning uh, th there's going to be a separate video on this. But essentially what this means is that if another project is using our project here, then it will also um, some of these includes will will propagate up into that project as well because they're public. Uh, in this case, we're just um, specifying the project binary directory. So that's a CMake variable that is uh, provided to us at, uh, at build configuration time. And it is CMake telling us where the build directory actually is. And uh, what we're saying is we want to be able to access files. We want to be able to include files from the project binary directory, which happens to be this directory that we're currently in. So that means that we can go back to our code and we can do something like this. So now when we compile, uh, CMake will, will have set up our make file or our project build configuration in a way um, so that our compiler will know where this file is or where to look for this file. And it won't complain that, uh, in fact, let me just show you what happens here. If I just comment that out and then I go back here and then I rebuild, it's going to complain. It doesn't know where this file is. So like I said, when we un uh, uncomment that here and we uh, re-add this line, now the compiler is going to know that this is a folder where it could look for um, header files. And when we rebuild that, now it can find it and it's all good. And like you saw, this is the generated file with the version number. So what do we do with that? When we go to our main, um, all we're doing is we're using uh, IO stream. So we're doing C out and we are printing our CMake basic project version. And then we're actually using the version variable uh, or the version number variables, they're not really variables, but version number defines that were generated by CMake. So like you saw, it generated this one and this one in our config, we included config, and now we can just print those out and everything's good. So if we run basic, let's clear the screen, you'll see that that was carried in from our build file and we can now print our version. This is useful if you're doing like a, an application where you might want to include the version number somewhere in the corner of the screen or you know usually when you click uh, about like help about or uh, on any application or whatever uh, it will um, it will have the version number of the project uh, or of the uh, of the application so that you know, maybe you want people to submit bug reports or whatever, or to know what version they're on because they're installing updates or whatever. This is how you would include that from your build system. Um, you can do fancy stuff like include a build number. Um, you might have some variables that are automatically incremented every time you compile and there's like fancy stuff you can do. And maybe we'll do a video on that at some point or another. But in this case, we just want to make sure that our build version or our project version is uh, included in our project and this is uh, how you do that.
So that completes this video. Um, there's probably going to be another one of these videos coming up at some point where we're going to go over some more tips and tricks and little things that you should probably know when you're working with CMake. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to your feedback. Thanks.